Hello, everyone, and welcome to Level 2 Advanced Training for Prodigy. This training is for educators who want to learn some tips and tricks on how to use Prodigy in the classroom. Whether you're new to Prodigy or an experienced user, this training will provide some insight from me, a teacher who used Prodigy for nine years in the classroom. We will cover how to use Prodigy in a whole group setting. We'll talk about device access, some implementation ideas, connecting with parents, and using Prodigy all year long. Let's start with using Prodigy in a whole group setting. You can use your built-in student account in a whole group setting to teach with Prodigy. You can join in the fun and reward your students at the same time. The first way you can use your Prodigy account is by modeling. You can introduce Prodigy for the first time to your class by projecting it on a digital board. You can show them the digital tools, the manipulatives, the helpful icons, and the read aloud feature. By modeling your expectations on how to use Prodigy in front of students, students will be more likely to mimic those expectations when learning independently. You can also do teacher versus student battles. You can hype up the experience by making an exclusive opportunity. Project it on the big screen and have a battle between you and a student. I always had students lining up to be the next one to battle me, so I made it a part of my dismissal routine by picking one student at the end of each day to battle. But Prodigy can be used for whole group instruction, too. You can teach new skills to students in a whole group setting using Prodigy. I would assign my student account the content that I would like to teach. Then I would project my student account in front of my students. They would participate with whiteboards and dry erase markers, solving problems that showed up during the battles. I would use the questions to teach the content and model the strategies. Then I would have students come up to the board and solve the problems collaboratively as a class. I'd pass off the pen and I would actually teach using Prodigy. You can also use Prodigy for student rewards. You can reward a mystery walker with a student battle at the end of the day. Or if you have students with the behavior plan, you can reward them with five to 10 minutes of Prodigy time. I actually made coupons for my treasure box featuring teacher battles and Prodigy time. This cut down on the amount of plastic things that I had to buy as well. So how do you use Prodigy in a whole group setting? You're going to want to use your student account. Click your name on your dashboard, then click Play Prodigy. This will log you in as a student. Your username and password is the same as your teacher account. When you go to math or English, Prodigy is going to ask you for your class code. You can find this class code on your Manage Classes section of your teacher dashboard. When you put in your class code, you're going to be added as a student in your own classroom. This has benefits because then you can assign yourself content that you can pull up in front of students in a whole group setting. So now that we've talked about using Prodigy in a whole group setting, let's talk about some different options of using Prodigy with varying access to devices. When I started using Prodigy, I only had three devices in my classroom, but I'm here to tell you that Prodigy works no matter how many devices you have in your room. If you have three devices, like me when I started, create a rotational schedule and a flipbook. You can use the buddy up model and have students work together. Other students can be with you or in small groups. If you have six devices, you can use a rotating schedule with or without buddies. And you can differentiate these rotations based on ability and need. If you have 11 devices, you can use this for individual work. You can do what I call a half class switch, where half of your students are on the devices and half of them are with me, and then we switch. This will help you differentiate your instruction for your students. Students can buddy up if you need to work one-on-one -on -one with a student as well. With 22 devices, students can all log in at once. You can engage your class in the class challenge, project it up on the board, do whole group competitions, and really engage your class all at once. So let's talk about some implementation ideas. How do you use Prodigy beyond the fun Friday or beyond just the centers? Let's talk about what some of those options might look like in your class. You can use Prodigy during arrival time. This is about 10 to 15 minutes a day, and you can have students log on to Prodigy first thing. Now this has some benefits. Students will arrive on time because they actually want to get to class. There'll be less fooling around in the hallways and less late arrivals because they're going to want to come in and get to work. You can replace paper morning work, which means 
teachers do not have to photocopy any more morning work. If you use Prodigy for both math and English, you can alternate math and English or have students work on certain subjects on specific days of the week. You can also use the data each morning to inform your instruction for that day. The most traditional use of Prodigy is during the ELA and math blocks. This is about 15 minutes a day. Think about it as part of your center rotations. It fosters independence. There will be less interruptions because students are actually working on their material, which gives you teacher time. Teachers can work with small groups or one-on-one -on -one at this time with less interruptions because students are actually working on what they're supposed to be working on. And again, you get data during this time. Prodigy is automatically going to grade. It's going to adapt to your students and track their progress for you. Then there's the case of using Prodigy during the intervention block. This varies by school, but Prodigy can be used for all students during this time. You can reach the above, on, and below grade level students all at once during the intervention block. It's also fun. Students will gladly complete their work without complaint. You can use Prodigy's data to track MTSS, RTI, IEP, or gifted goals by assigning students content that aligns with their goals. Then there's bonus time, those spare minutes that occur because of odd occurrences or scheduling gaps. Don't just fill it with random things. Make it Prodigy time. For special days, let's say there's a field trip or picture day, those one-off events that make the schedule off. Fill that time with Prodigy. Then there's homework. You can extend learning in math and English at home. Again, no wasted time with Prodigy. All Prodigy time is valuable. A unique way to use Prodigy is by starting Prodigy clubs. Some schools are opening their computer labs in the morning before school. You can use an invitation model to target specific students. Those students are now coming to school on time because they actually want to learn. For after school, open the computer lab for students to be on Prodigy. Be creative with dismissal and duties. And of course, there are weekly clubs. Teachers can host grade level Prodigy clubs on specific days of the week to match whatever model your school uses for clubs. Now let's move into parents and conferences. So why should you invite parents to Prodigy? Well, when you invite parents to Prodigy, that builds the school to home connection. You can be partners to help your students succeed. There are also parent reports. Parents can track their students' data and they have their own dashboard. There are also assignment notifications. Prodigy alerts parents when a student is given an assignment. And of course, it's homework the students love. They love doing Prodigy at home. When parents asked me for ways to help their child at home, my answer was always Prodigy. You can invite parents by copying the invitation and pasting it onto a class website or communication app. Or you can invite parents by pasting in their emails and Prodigy will email them for you. The third way to invite parents is to download PDF letters in English or Spanish to print and send home with students. This is an example of what the PDF letter looks like. It's a welcome letter with the student's login and password information. There's a QR code which leads parents to the app. That's going to help them track their child's progress, give them rewards, and set goals for them. This is a look at the desktop side of the parent dashboard. Parents can view reports, send rewards, and set goals from here too. During parent-teacher conferences, you can show Prodigy's reports to parents and encourage them to sign up for their free parent account so they can track their student progress too. Here are some tips for engaging parents with Prodigy. At the beginning of the year, I encourage you to talk about Prodigy at Open House. Invite the parents via email, downloadable letters, and encourage home use of Prodigy. During the middle of the year, you're going to want to reinforce Prodigy. Share the data and the reports at parent-teacher conferences. Reinvite parents who have not yet connected and again encourage at-home use. Throughout the year, you can celebrate success by sending home reward certificates from the student leaderboards. You can share the student growth with parents throughout the year, and you can host Prodigy tournaments and announce the champion on your class page. At the end of the year, encourage home use as well to prevent the summer slide. Prodigy continues to be available for your students even over the summer. 
If you do these things, you're going to see parent engagement increase. Using Prodigy all year is recommended for the best results. To help you use Prodigy all year, both online and off, we have a resource page where we post downloadable content to help make your job easier. We have resource worksheets, which are printable math worksheets organized by domain, and these are currently available for grades one through four. Take a look at these worksheets, download them, and use them however you see fit. We also post seasonal bundles, which are downloadable bundles for the seasons and themes throughout the school year. Things like back to school, fall, winter, and end of the year. There's math, English, and even social emotional content in these bundles as well. These are the things you can use offline to help engage your students using Prodigy materials. This math calendar is extremely useful. It's 365 days of math. You can print it, post it, and challenge students daily. You can use it for homework, spiral review, a warm-up each day, or even a math center. Then, of course, in-game, we have seasonal festivals, like Pumpkin Fest and Spring Fest. These festivals occur on a rotational basis. These seasonal festivals really engage students and make them want to earn the in-game rewards. In order to stay informed of all the new releases and bundles, we have a teacher community group on Facebook called Prodigy Teacher Community. It's a place where Prodigy posts videos, downloadable bundles, and answers your questions. It's a great place for you to go and learn more about Prodigy and keep up with the updates. So if you'd like to join our Facebook community, we would love to have you there. So in summary, today's training focused on using Prodigy in a whole group setting, ways to use Prodigy with various devices, implementation ideas, parents, and conferences, and using Prodigy all year. In order to continue having success with Prodigy this year, be sure to use Prodigy Math and English in your classroom each week. Invite parents to create those accounts so they can engage and view their child's data too. Visit our resource page and our Facebook community for downloadables and updates. Thank you so much for attending today's training. We hope you learned something today.